Okay. <laughs> All right. We are live. Welcome, everyone. Um, I'm going to pull this up on my phone too so we can answer questions as we go. Um, so I'm Corey Walmsley. I'm the CEO of Aurora Coriolis Publishing. And today we have the fabulous Joe Davis. And she is going to tell you a little bit about herself in just a second. But first, I want to mention that um, I, how I met her, which is through Living Kindly. And this is our book that just came out at the beginning of June. Um, so this was the first book published by Aurora Coriolis Publishing, which is super exciting. And it's all about kindness, which everybody needs more of in their lives anyway, right? Um, so Joe is joining us today as one of the uh, collaborators on this book. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and turn it over to you. Tell us who you are, what you do, and then we'll dive into your chapter a little bit. <laughs> How much time do we have? <laughs> we want. <laughs> so it has been such an honor to work with you these last couple I guess it's been about two months now of just this 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 hustle of getting the book collected getting everyone's chapters bringing all these people from all over the world together which is no easy um, task I know um, Lee Clark you know really championed this and that you you were doing all the behind the scenes magic I feel like you were like the Wizard of Oz <laughs> And so the, the name Aurora Coriolis is just sounds so magical. And I'm like, yeah, she's like the Wizard of Oz <laughs> behind the scenes doing all this magical stuff that none of us want to do when we want to publish a book, let me tell you. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. You're so welcome. So a little bit about me. I'm, um, goodness, so I'm what's called an intuitive, which I know, Corey, you have a, a lot of friends that are incredibly gifted and and work in that realm of energy work. Um, I move in and out of all of the clairs. So um, it's interesting to work with me because uh, I don't just see something or feel something. I hear, I smell, I, <clears throat> it's kind of like the one-stop shop for all of your energy work <laughs> right here. Um, and it's interesting because for a lot of years, I really fought that most raw, authentic, real part of myself. And we know when we're writing, you know, it's like being naked in Central Park. I mean, you're, you're putting everything out there. I think being naked in Central Park might be, might be easier actually, but um, you're putting it out there and, and readers are drawn to this raw, gritty, authentic energy that you put on that paper. And if you put fluff on there, they know. Mm -hmm. And if it's all perfectly worded and poetic and no one wants that right now, like right now, the world is just really itching and craving to see other, especially women in this raw, transparent, loving, just, I'm a hot mess and I don't know what I'm doing, but I'm showing up for myself, my family. I'm showing up for other women. I'm, I'm moving through whatever storm to get to the other side because maybe someone will be inspired and now I'm going to share the story. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, it was really interesting for me. It was very cathartic. And I know a lot of the authors in this book said this to put your story down on paper. And, and be really real in who you are and not just be real in who you are, but roll around in it, you know, like glitter and confetti and really like make the t-shirt, you know, make, the, you know, get the, get the engraved necklace that states your, your intention and who you are and, and owning all and accepting all these parts of you that, you know, I, most people I see that are really successful are really different. You know, most of my, you know, dear friends are slightly autistic. Like, you know, most of the, the people that I admire are, are just a little bit not mainstream. You know, they're game changers. They're inventing things and other people are calling them crazy. And I'm like, I love that. I love that. And when it comes to writing, that's what people want to read about is, mm -hmm. you know, those moments when we don't feel like we fit in, those moments when we feel like we're being judged, those moments when we're stepping out in our, you know, unicorn high vibe weirdness and, and being who we really are and, and who we're meant to be on this planet. Mm -hmm. That's a lot of information, but I feel like it's all sort of woven in together. I think for a lot of us authors, you know, writing a chapter in this great book was, um, I don't know, it was like getting a tattoo with, with your new name. Like, this is who I really am. This is who I've always been. And I'm mm -hmm. showing up wearing that skin you know, that, you know, shut off all these layers and this is really who I am. Um, and so thank you for that. Yeah, 
Well, thank you for sharing that. <laughs> um, and I think that's an important thing to talk about too, is, um, you know, a lot of people think, okay, I have to write this book. Oh, I have to be Charles Dickens. I have to do all this flowery stuff and take forever to describe the way the tablecloth sits on the table. Like, no, that's not what we want. We want to hear right. raw and real who you are in here, um, dirt and glitter and everything. And I think that can be challenging because we see, you know, this things like that held up as this is what we want. Mm -hmm. um, but really, if we're trying to do that, then we're just flattening ourselves and pressing ourselves into the you know societal mold again. Yeah, and which is so boring. Yeah. So boring. Nobody wants to see that. Yeah. That'd be a great name for a book, Dirt and Glitter. <laughs> somebody, somebody go write that book, Dirt yeah, and Glitter. I, I'm liking how you said Naked in Central Park. I think that that should be a book too. <laughs> yeah, for real. That, that should totally be a book. And, and, you know, the greatest writers, the writers that I really admire anyway, you know, I think Brene Brown right now is very articulate, mm -hmm. but she has these glimmers in her writing where it's just raw and saucy. Mm -hmm. And then you've got Jen Sincero, who's super saucy, who I would totally invite to a barbecue and we would be BFFs. Like, oh yeah. So that's the kind of writing that, that I'm seeing all these women who are like, I mean, that's what they've got stacked up in their house. And I'm like, oh. Yeah, that's real and raw and gritty and beautiful and messy. Yes. And perfect. Yeah. And it doesn't yeah. have to be perfect when you first write it down either. That's yeah. why people have you. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I, I did want to talk about your chapter and the inspiration for it and kind of how you felt when you were writing it. Um, first of all, I love the title. Um, Kindness is badass. And I think that you know, if, if you need any mantra at all in your life, kindness is badass would be a perfect one. Mm -hmm. um, great for an engraved bracelet or necklace or, you know, bumper sticker or whatever. But let's, mm -hmm. let's talk about that. Kindness is badass. You know, tell yeah. me what that means to you. So I would, I would line it up with, say you're at the grocery store and you're walking your car and you see a woman and she's sort of struggling with her groceries. Are you the person that just jumps in and is like, oh, I got you, girl? Or are you the person that's like, well... I don't want to take away her power or I don't want to make her nervous if I come up and try to help her. Or, you know, you're, if you're looking around to see who's watching, you might be an asshole. I mean, <laughs> yeah. And, and, and not to be really, you know, super, you know, but I love Jesus, but I curse a little, it's okay. So, so that's what I think about. I think about like, are we being kind because it simply brings us joy and it feels like the right thing to do? We're listening to our intuition mm -hmm. or are we being kind to prove our worthiness, prove our deservingness, get accolades, um, get a button or a sticker or a trophy. And I think what people don't recognize is the goodness we put on this planet. If it's for show negates the goodness we put on this planet. Mm -hmm. It's like, you might as well not even do it because energetically it just flatlines you. It's not going to send good. I mean, I always laugh because people are like, I, I have clients, I, I do work. I teach a course called Big Mess to Big Magic, which is, I believe that especially women um, have such powerful intuitive gifts and all the messy, mess, mess, messiness in our life is all linked to us not listening to our gut, not trusting our heart, not trusting our higher power, whatever you want to call it. And instead spending too much time mudding around and people pleasing and for show and um you know it's like dating a great looking guy that has no soul I mean it's pretty I mean that you know what I mean so what are we doing the thing for mm -hmm. so I think that kindness is badass is really that core statement is really centered around it's not pretty always it's not perfect it's not warm and fuzzy and pink and fluffy and, you know, unicorn, whatever. It's being honest. It's being filled with integrity. It's doing the right thing for the sake of doing what feels like the right thing and listening and trusting to your gut. So you get people that are, you know, spending their whole life, you know, I hear this with clients. I'll get back to that is I, I hear them say things like, you know, I really try to be a good person and and I, you know, I volunteer and I do this and these bad things happen in my life. And I'm like, yeah, so, so why are you doing all those things? What do you have to prove? And they're like, well, I just want to be this. And I'm like, yeah, that's why your life sucks. 
if you just do the thing that feels good and, and brings you joy and makes your tummy flutter and makes your heart pound and, and you know what, maybe it makes you look ridiculous, do it anyway, do it because you feel uncomfortable doing it. You know, um, I can't remember her name. You'll remember it probably, but she wrote a year of yes. And, um, Shondaland, Shondaland, mm-hmm. Shonda Rhimes, she, you know, she's yeah. written like, you know, 12 shows, um, on syndicate right now, but, um, She talked about how she never said yes to anything. And I read that book and was like, wow, I say yes. This was years ago. I said, I say yes to things because I know I'll kick ass at them. I'll be really good at them. So I'll say yes. Or I know that um, it'll be fun, um, you know, or it'll, it'll, it'll make me look a certain way around a certain group of people. So I'll say yes. This was years ago. Mm -hmm. Certainly not who I am now. And then I went, wait a minute. That's sort of like half and half ass in it, (laughs) you know? And so I made a commitment to a year of saying yes to everything that makes me feel uncomfortable. So I'd be in a conversation with friends and I would say, oh my gosh, I could never do that. That would make me so uncomfortable. And, um, I, I then had to go do the thing because I said out louder in my head, I could never do that. That's so scary. So it became one thing right after another of me getting over myself like yeah. getting out of my own way. And it totally was like a great launching point for me. So I highly recommend that for everyone. But anyway, being kind is just about doing the right thing because it brings you joy because you aren't proving anything. You're not trying to prove yourself as a caregiver archetype. You're not trying to prove that you're this good human. You're not trying to get into heaven. I mean, you got to read my chapter. It'll blow your mind, but it, it's just about that. That brings me joy and it feels right in my heart to show up for that person. you know, taking food to the neighbors, you know, old me would have been like, well, they may not like my cooking or, well, I don't want to intrude. Well, um, I'm not real put together today. So I I need to go put my lipstick on. Yeah. Like stupid stuff. No, you just show up and you do it. And since I've been living this type of lifestyle, okay, seriously, this book fell into my lap two and a half days after I told God, the universe, I want to co co-co- I want to co-author a book because I can't get off my butt to finish my own book. Wow. So I want to co-author a book. Two and a half days later, Leah Clark posted on Facebook. She's co-authoring this book and she's so excited and it's about kindness. And I commented and said, tell me how to support you. Tell me how to show up for you. Tell me how to share this with Lift a Sister Up, my Facebook group. You know, tell me how to shine for you and, and get the word out. This is amazing. Hashtag I'm a writer. <laughs> And she immediately messaged me. She's like, let's talk, let's do a Zoom. And literally within two weeks, I had a chapter submitted to this book. So this change and this lifestyle shift is a magical experience. And it's really about having the courage to be misunderstood, the courage to be disliked, the courage to be judged. And you do you and you show up in situations and moments simply because it makes you happy and it fills you with joy. And it, you know, it it just seems like the right thing to do. And if you care what other people think, then you really have to do it because you got to get over that for the good stuff to fill your heart and, and just land at your feet and, and show up in your life. It's like yeah. really important. Oh yeah. Yeah. I love all of this. Um, I especially love that you put that out there and it happened right away. <laughs> Two and a half days. That's amazing. We, we are so powerful. It blows my mind. I think to myself, what chatter are people having in their head? And then I look at their life and I'm like, it's a reflection of all that negative chatter. They're drawing in every bit of it because the universe is like, oh, you want more of that? Because that's what you're obsessing on. Let me send you some more. It's like a whole shit show. So, so I really <laughs> believe that our mindset, if we're in that space of gratitude and you know something challenging is happening in your life, what do I need to learn from that challenge? Where mm-hmm. can I find gratitude in, in this situation? Whatever that is, it's just it's important to do it. I mean, sometimes it's standing at a funeral, looking over a gravesite, going, okay, I have to find a morsel of gratitude. Sometimes it's hard, but we got to do it. Um, because it just will get harder. I guarantee it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I wanted to circle back. You were talking about intuition and, um, I just feel like that's the overarching theme here where you're talking about, Mm -hmm. um, saying yes to things. And I, I always, feel like because we're kind of taught to like press that down, like, oh, go ahead and 
you know, fit into this box, even though you don't really feel like you belong in there, like go ahead in. It's, it's great. Right. It's great. Once you're in the box, um, it, it feels like we are constantly, you know, guided in, in that, especially when we're younger and we have, you know, all the well-meaning adults who are over us, like kind of, okay, do this, do this. Oh do yeah. This, like be successful. Yeah. Yeah. Like go hug uncle, go give uncle Tom a hug or uncle Bob a hug. And you're cringing. Yeah. Because you know something about him. You feel that your gut, something's off. Yeah. It's not safe. But our, our parents are like, go give them a hug. And you're like, they're creepy. Yeah. But, or, but yeah, that's the beginning of all of that kind of stuff. Yeah. That's the yeah. beginning of all of that. And that's, that's, that's our superpower. Yeah. I mean, that's our gift. It's like, I call it in my coursework and my, with my clients, I'm like, that's your red phone to God. Like that's your, your guides, your angels, whatever you want to call it. Um, you know, your dead grandmother who's up there going, stop dating him. He's bad. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, come on. And we're not listening to it. And we feel it sometimes in our belly. You know, mm -hmm. sometimes we'll start having stomach problems. Sometimes we get these little gnawing headaches. Sometimes mm -hmm. our chest will sort of feel like it's going like that. Um, it shows up and it's mm -hmm. always trying to talk to us and help us and guide us. And we just stuff it down because we're like, what will people think? Or we're like, Oh, I can't possibly say that. that. Yeah, it's my truth, but I can't possibly express that. You know, right. so we just keep stuffing it down where it's like, if you speak from the right place of your heart and you speak from a place of love just, and it's honest, but as long as it's from a place of love, you can say anything, you can get away with anything. Right. And people are like, they will receive it from that energy and that frequency. And, um, but yeah, your intuition is absolutely everything. I love it how we're all working from home right now. I'm waiting for my kids to, <laughs> waiting for doors to slam or the cat to vomit. Like my daughter just walked this in. This is real life. <laughs> <laughs> and we're like avoiding eye contact. <laughs> I, I was over here going like this as she walked over and took the light <laughs> off of my computer. Um, yeah. Just wait for my cat. My cat will come in the screen shortly, I'm sure. But, um, okay. but yeah, your intuition is everything. It really yeah. is. And um, the people that really listen to it and the people that hone in on it, they're also the same people that know who they are. Like yeah. they know who they are. They're not navigating their space based on all these other people in their lives. They're like, I know who I am. And they have courage. And, and they say, yes, I can agree to that because it resonates with my heart or no. And, oh, I'm sorry, you're disappointed but that just doesn't feel right to me. I'm out. Mm -hmm. I mean, look at how many people during COVID were like invited to parties and they were like, yeah, just something feels wrong about it. I don't feel like going. I yeah. just feel like it's like, I just can't seem to get ready to go. Something is like keeping me from going and they don't go. And then like 10 people end up with COVID and like four are in the hospital. I, I have, there's so many stories like that. And I'm like, that's your gut. That's your red phone to God. It's a yeah. big deal. Yeah. And so I want to kind of flip that now. We were talking about kindness earlier and about that intuition and then we stop it ourselves um how do people get out of stopping that so like we were talking about the lady in the parking lot with you know juggling her groceries and we see that we think oh I don't want to scare her or you know I don't want to bother her she's got this how do we stop ourselves and let us let ourselves just trust our gut that hey we got that ping and we need to just trust that mm -hmm. I think I think Corey it's like the deepest part of your heart. Like if you can connect with that deep, deep part of your heart, the core of who you are, which is a human on this planet, it's, it's, it's in our blood to be kind. I mean, when we're kids, we're sharing everything. We're running up to strangers, hugging them because we feel like they need a hug and our parents think we're weird. Um, you know, we're, we're giving away things We're we're generous. We include people. We don't, we don't understand racism. Like we don't know any of that. We're taught all that crap. So it's that core, deep, cellular, just the deepest part of who we are, that soul space, I think, that mm -hmm. is, is when we're seeing something and we see someone that needs help, we have to dig into that part of us that goes, I don't give a crap what anybody thinks. This is the right thing to do. And I can sleep well knowing I did that because I just got me to bounce it off of, you know, me, my higher power, if you're religious, if you're not, whatever. But I, I just have that, that soul part of me to be okay with it mm -hmm. and you know I, I wrote this uh, expression I might have heard it some from, from someone else I probably shouldn't take credit for it but the ghost of regret or what stand at your bedside you know on your deathbed 
Mm-hmm. So how many do you want there? You want a party with family and friends, the real people in your life that are going to bring you, you know, chicken noodle soup when you have the flu that are showing up for you during the messy and the gritty, the muddy, the muddy times of your life? Or do you want to invest your time doing things for the wrong reasons? And then all these ghosts of regret are around you on your deathbed going, why were you afraid? Why were you afraid to show up for other people? Why were you afraid to say yes to yourself and turn down, you know, an invitation to something because you, you knew you were spreading yourself too thin over and over and over and over again. And then you got sick and now you're on your deathbed because you lacked courage to do the right thing for your soul, which is sometimes saying no to other people and saying yes to ourselves. So I think it's that space where you just, I, I think it's all about courage. I feel like courage is like the root of all of it. Um, being kind takes courage. Um, not caring what other people think takes courage. Mm-hmm being authentic and listening to your intuition and loving on others. Even I think that's what it comes down to. Yeah. Yeah. And I think a lot of that relates back, you know, circling back to writing now, I think a lot of that is very important for getting your story out, you know, having that courage to say, all right, this is important to the people it's important to. And, you know, I don't care that the neighbor might think I'm a little weird for sharing this. I don't care if, you know, my mom is like, oh my God, why'd she share that? Yeah. Um, <laughs> all right, What's mom. the title of your book? Oh my gosh. <laughs> yeah. Um, but I, I think that stuff is very important to sit back and think about because we do a lot of times stop ourselves from, you know, being kind, from being authentic, from. Um, you know, sharing those that are innermost parts of ourselves because we're so caught up in everybody else's thoughts. And, and if you're a writer, you know it, you know it, you've had people tell you your whole life you're a writer and you're sitting on it. Why? Because you're scared. Mm-hmm. Courage. So yeah. what's your commitment? Is your commitment to the, what the world thinks? Is your commitment to your sacred contract to the reason you, you showed up on this planet and why you're here? And I'm not even talking about leaving a legacy. I'm not talking about any about that. I'm just talking about the right thing to do that your soul is like, really? You had this chance and you blew it. Like life is short. Like what if we got five years left on this planet? Do I want to sit back and be like, oh, I could have done this. You know, I could have done this with this little awesome, you know, number one best-selling sticker. Like I could have done this and I didn't because what will my mom think? I mean, what a horrible, like, I don't want all those ghosts of regret. I want to just be like, okay, I'm here. I'm doing it. It feels right. Let's get Mm -hmm. it done. And so, yeah. And, and when I work with clients, I work one-on-one with all these clients and it's all about like me saying things that show up for me that make no sense to me. And I can't care, you know, if they make sense to me or not, I, I feel them and I speak them. And then the other clients like, oh my gosh, my mom died last month and she loved ladybugs. And I'm like, oh, I'm seeing ladybugs everywhere. And they're like, oh, that makes complete sense. Like, you know, just, you got to have courage to just speak. It's just, just like, if you had a friend that was struggling and they were weighing on your heart and maybe you didn't know they were struggling. So you pick up the phone and go, you're weighing on my heart today. And this might sound weird, but I don't care. I just want you to know, I love you. I'm thinking about you. Mm-hmm. And they're like bursting into tears. You have no idea what's going on in my life. How did you know? We all have that gift yeah. all the time. And we sit around and go, I don't want to bother them. Well, what, I might look crazy. I mean, everything about my gifts is sort of nuts and it's beautiful mm-hmm. and it's a gift and, and it, and it heals hearts and it's kind and it can't be about me. And I think that's what kindness is. It can't be about us. It just has to be about feeling, feeling out into the right thing to do. So all you writers out there that are, that are sitting on your, your beautiful words that the world desperately needs, um, have courage. I love that. <laughs> um, and we've, we've been on here for a while, so I don't want to take up your whole day, <laughs> even though we could sit here and talk for hours. All day. <laughs> such a great conversation. Um, but yeah, um, I just wanted to know, let's say, you know, somebody is thinking about a book. They're thinking about writing their chapter, you know, maybe in an anthology or, you know, finally grabbing that courage and saying, all right, you know, today's the day I'm going to start it. Um, what would you tell them? You know, I always heard this. I've heard this from every writer. Every writer I know is like, write every day. Mm-hmm. And I'm terrible at it. Like, I'm a, I'm a good, give me a topic and I'll write it. It'll be awesome. Mm-hmm. Um, give me a chapter, I'll write it. It'll be awesome. Like, I'm good at that. Um, 
but I'm not really good at writing every day. And I think that's something that I need to get better at. I think it's something I encourage everyone else to, because they think they don't have the material. Mm -hmm. Um, but once you start writing on a regular basis, when I've been in those seasons, I've been much better at it when I have, um, you end up with a lot of material. You know, I also think that, um, collaborating with a mentor, um, is huge. I think that, um, anthologies are brilliant, you know, collecting, getting a group of people together and, and pulling in all that information. It's fun. Um, and it also gives everyone an an opportunity to, to get their platform out there. Um, I, gosh, you know, I will tell you this with writing when I would get stuck there, the springtime writing outside, I can knock out something about being in nature and not being real hot and miserable is great for me. I would highly suggest for people, if you can find a space, um, I actually wrote my chapter outside, like, boom, done. Um, so finding a place. Um, you know, Brene Brown did a post the other day about how she wants to write another book. I don't know if you saw this. And she was talking about the black abyss. She goes, I know what this will do to the world around me because I start writing and I'm like, my life goes crazy. She's like, I'm writing till four in the morning and then I'm sleeping a few hours. And then and my poor family doesn't see me for like two, three months. I think and I she's, that one. Yeah. And she was just, and I was like, this has been my biggest fear. Cause I've actually told David, like, if I could just go to a cabin somewhere for a month, I could finish my book. Yeah. Because I'm so I'm, I'm ADD. Who isn't, who isn't? I mean, if you own a cell phone, you're ADD. Yeah. Um, but that's what I would encourage people to find like what works for you. When have you written well in the past? Was it an assignment? Then you need a buddy, you need a buddy to help give you assignments and keep you accountable. Like have a, you know, have a partner. Um, is it being in a specific place? Are you a beach girl? Are you a woods girl? Are you a, a guy that, you know, just needs to be locked up in a dark room and, and get it all out and nobody disturb you? Like whatever you have to set up to get in that flow, know what it is, figure out what it is, and then just do it. Um, so that would be my advice. Yeah, I think that's perfect. You got to have the right environment and then it all comes out. Yeah, or have someone like Lee who's like, okay, I need your, I need your, I need your chapter. <laughs> <I'm> like, <Yeah. laughs> Deadlines are really good too, even if uh, you have to set them up yourself and then have a, another person enforce them. Oh yeah, so, yeah. yeah. <laughs> all right. Well, thank you so much for sharing all your wisdom and this is such a wonderful conversation. Um, can you tell everyone where they can find you? So my website is um, still under construction, Um, but you can find me on Lift a Sister Up on Facebook. We have about 155 or 156,000 followers, excuse me, right now, Um, but it's Lift a Sister Up. And eventually, you know, hopefully in the next week, it'll be liftasisterup.com. We know how technology can take some time to get it all um, sorted. Anyway, so um, those are two places, or you can just find me, Joe Davis, on Facebook. Um, But this has been a great conversation. I always love our conversations. Yeah, me too. Hopefully this will help some folks. (laughs) Yes, I hope so too. Um, And of course, if you guys have questions for us after we're gone, (laughs) um, you know, hashtag replay and just drop your questions below. Um, We didn't have any while we were talking, so we just kept talking. (laughs) I know, we just had a good old time. (laughs) All right. Thank you, Joe, again, for sharing your time with us and everybody who's watching. Thank you for joining us.